Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about tech giants and C sharp. So let's get into it. So the question in question was Frederick. Hi Frederick, uh, I have a question for you. Why why are technology giants like Google, Amazon and Facebook, IBM, why do they mostly use Java and very few use .NET? Well, I probably if I wanted a really good answer to this, I would post that on like Quora or something and like try to get someone from these companies to answer that question because uh, I mean I can only give you the answer that at least from my perspective has been the norm answer to why this is. Uh, historically the you, uh, you should know a few very small things that like they're not the only reason but they do factor in. Uh, Java is an older language than C Sharp and the .NET framework. And Java, uh, C Sharp, C -sharp um, uh, has been inspired by Java. The main difference between Java and C Sharp historically has been that Java has been, a, uh, you have been able to run Java on any operating system which means both Linux distributions and well, if you're using Windows or any of Microsoft's different so solutions, right, uh, you would be able to run on both. Uh, C Sharp, on the other hand, did not have that. You could not run on Linux, you had to run on Windows. And that touches on something that is a term that you may have heard about, which is called vendor locking. Now, when are locking is basically the idea that if I am a tech giant or I'm a any company, it doesn't really matter if I'm a tech giant or whatever. It does. It really comes down to if I sell you a product and you start depending on that prod product, and you want to make a change. Let's say that you wanted to do something different. You want to sh switch your tech stack or anything like that. Well, you then you can't really do that. You can't move your uh, your solutions and your the, your business uh, to someone else because I have made I, I have create I, I'm uh, I'm uh, a dependency my whatever I sell you this is a dependency for you to be able to do your thing. It's um, it's a concept that is it's actually uh, many there are many companies to have kind of have realized this like the Heinz ketchup as an example where you st like if you want to sell ketchup well then you're going to have to have quite a lot of things like you you're going to have to have the tomatoes you're going to have to have all the um, different ingredients to create the ketchup but you're also going to have to have the bottle and really big corporations that kind of take this holistic approach to whatever they're doing the um, say apple as an example they try to reduce the amount of external dependencies that they have in order to own everything that is relevant to their core business. Heinz did the same thing. And the reason why you want to do this is because you want to have the flexibility and the freedom to make any business decision that you could possibly want to do and be as flexible as possible without being locked down by somebody else. An example would be if, let's say for the sake of argument that you create a, if you move all of your infrastructure to Amazon, well, there are solutions, of course, today like Kubernetes and so forth that may make it less or more easy for you to switch from Amazon to Azure or something like that. But at the end of the day, Amazon kind of owns you. Like you have all your infrastructure on Amazon, which means that if you want to move from Amazon to somewhere else, there's a lot of incentive for you to just stick with that thing. And for some companies, this is a very big deal. An example would be Google. Uh, there is a reason why Google has uh, been very excited about, say, Kotlin, because Java for the Android platform is not Google's, it's Oracle's, or well, it's, it's a product that they don't own, which means that depending on what they want to do, well, they're going to have to maintain a relationship with Oracle, because they're depending on something that Oracle owns. That's not always a good thing. I mean, sure, when you and me, when we use something like React or Angular or something like that, if it's, a f it's, if it's something that fits our use case and we don't really have to account for 
the external party coming and suing us or telling us what we can do and what we can't do and so forth or making decisions that aren't really in line with what we want to do it's fine then it's going to save us time and that's why most people have so-called third-party dependencies or do like the vendor locking thing because it's simply a time saver or a cost efficient thing to do but when you're in a company where your your goals are different from whatever your vendor is providing you you have to tow them along with you and depending on the partnership, uh, it, that might be something that slows you down, it might cost you a lot of money, or it might be something that blocks you from doing things entirely. So an example would be, well, if you're gonna be one of the biggest IT companies in the world, so I say Google or Amazon and so forth, do you really want to deal with the licensing and like all of the good stuff that comes with Microsoft if you're gonna run like a cloud infrastructure, or do you want something that is basically free? Well, not always completely free, but the uh, the Linux operating system is something like you, that you can just use it. And in many cases, you can do quite a lot with more with it, and you have a lot more flexibility uh, than you, you, you would have had if you used the Windows operating system. So what's happened, and I'm, no, I'm kind of just very much generalizing this now, so you had take it for what it is. What's happened, at least from my perspective, is that Microsoft and C Sharp and uh, Microsoft has realized that this, I'm not saying old school, but sort of old school mentality, at the very least in IT, where you try to create a situation where, because I mean, the, that's their business model. They want you to be locked in to their products because that's the, how they're going to make their money. But they've realized since then that due to the open source community and a lot of the initiatives and a lot of companies such as say Google, for example, and in many cases Facebook and Amazon to a certain extent as well, they have uh, they have changed a lot of the, these, this mindset of trying to be this standard corporation that I just own everything that you own and then you pay me for that thing to a much more open model where they get you to depend on their tools, and they bec they become a presence where like they where you're using their the you, where, where they get you to buy into their products. Some of them are free, and some of them are paid, and that's a, that's a very different type of model from than from saying that yeah, as if you want to use my stuff, you need to use only my stuff from day one, and you're not going to be well. We're going to make it really hard for you to move to anything else. And since then, uh, Microsoft, at least from my perspective, they've done really great like they've tried they've tried really hard to catch up to the more open source inclined companies and i think that before you know like i mean we're kind of sort we're sort of already getting there where you can now actually i mean the the argument saying that well job is platform independent and c sharp is and c sharp when dot net is not it's it's getting less it's still sort of true for certain circumstances but it's getting less true by the day the Microsoft is really trying hard to get to a point where they can have the same sort of flexibility as Java, uh, it's, but it's going to take time because, as you can imagine, if Google and Amazon and Facebook and so forth, like these are companies that have been around for some, quite for some time now, and just because you change uh, C Sharp to be something that is more flexible that doesn't mean that the companies that I mean other companies are still are using Java because it was there when they needed it and the buy-in and the investment in Java is fairly significant and you're not just going to change that overnight just as I mean Rust is not just overnight going to replace C and C++ for example even though more people are adopting it and I think that same thing is going to happen with C Sharp and .NET. I think that if Microsoft continues improving uh, their tools and making them more open and more flexible, they will start chipping away at this monop uh, this kind of job. I'm not saying Java monopoly, but the position that Java has, uh, and that is the trend that we continue seeing. I would say. So what I want you to take away from this is that. If you want to know why Google, Amazon, or whatever tech company you would care to mention is using Java instead of, say, C Sharp, you have to ask them. But in general terms, the reason is because most of the bigger IT companies want to avoid vendor locking. Because when you're a big company or a, any type of company, it's very useful for you to feel like you can make any decision you want, regardless of what that decision is. And Microsoft has been running their products or the, like their business model has been very 
traditionally corporate for quite some time. It's been our uh, our operating system, our tools. If you buy into the to .NET and C Sharp, we own you. That's kind of what they've been they've been about for quite some time. It's changing to a much more open model, but that's how uh, that's how it's been. Whereas Java and um, Linux and so forth, these are much more open platforms where you have more freedom and less responsibilities towards some external company. And that is something that is very attractive if you're going to be something like, like a company like Google or Amazon and so forth, where you really, really do have to think about flexibility because you want to own everything that makes you money. Have a great day.